about one more thing before we get into Alex's portion. So it looks really good, but I wanted to stress also um, when you guys are starting to do this move, we always want to start with the secrets and we still want to frame with one hand. This isn't going to be like, oh, we're not even going to try the first option. We're already just going to go into the second option. We still want to keep our frames. It's just kind of one of those last resort moments as well as um, another thing with your partner on top. Instead of falling on top of their chest like we've been doing, it's supposed to be more into the uh, leg drag position. This way, I still have a little bit of um, distance, right? So they're still going to uh, towards my legs. The reason I'm, I'm going towards the legs is because she's doing a good job of framing my upper body, right? Because if she's doing a good job framing here, I'm not going to be able to get chest to chest here. So the only way I can overextend her and get closer to her body is if I walk towards the legs. This is why this second, uh, this sit up escape works. But if someone lands chest to chest on you, you're probably not going to be able to sit up. Even if you make a grip on, uh, or if you make a grip. Because I'm too heavy over your upper body. So this works if you do a good job of preventing the chest to chest, right? This is anytime your legs get pushed to the side in any kind of scenario, whether it's they're in between your legs or whatever, anytime your legs are getting pushed to the side but they don't have chest to chest connection, you use a sit up escape to be able to square your hips back up. So, sorry, I should have mentioned that. Um, first as we were starting to drill. But like I said, I, I want to uh, maintain the sea hips. I want to maintain the good frame. And the last important thing, um, this is also a common mistake in, uh, in guard retention, is that we let them get too close sometimes. Like let's say she drops in the half or and we're doing a good job framing on top and they're getting you know frustrated going to the outside. So they drop and they're trying to get closer and she's trying to control my upper body. And especially with the knee, having this grip, it's really, really powerful. It's a big no-no on bottom to accept, right? We don't want to accept that we don't want to have them able to control our upper body or our head at all. So a tip for you guys on bottom, break, or just in general, breaking grips. I want to chest escape to get the tension out of my knee. This makes it really easy. And this you can also do from standing. As you're uh, making grips, if I put tension into it, it's really easy to break. Versus here, I'm pulling, I'm, I'm having to fight for strength. So instead, I make, um, I make the tension, and I take it all out, and then I can break super easy. So the same thing goes when you're on bottom. First, Try not to even let them get their grips, uh, get this grip. But if they do, just escape, make uh, the tension, pull it out, and then you can break the grip super easy and go back into um, getting your frames back. So I just wanted to mention those things. Um, but I think it's time to uh, switch over. But did you guys have any questions about anything on bottom? Any position? Again, maybe they're just too strong or whatever. I make four fingers inside. I keep my shoulders off the mat. I don't want to stay too flat here, right? I have a short timing on this one. I make four fingers inside. My knuckles go to her neck. I come up to my left elbow now. I start punching, extending my arm. I come up to my hand. I butt scoot out and I get my legs back inside. 